Ladies and gentlemen of the Shred Gaming Silicon video, let us discuss the PlayStation 4's memory architecture. So we've heavily discussed the Xbox One in the last few weeks, especially regarding the ESRAM and GPU performance. But I wanted to share this because it's from the perspective of Future Labs, which of course are uh, responsible for Velocity and Velocity Ultra, and of course the PS4 slash Vita exclusive, which is Velocity 2X. By the way, guys, I would highly recommend you would check out Velocity Ultra. It's a really good game. I've done a full review on this very channel so you can just do a quick search if you would like more information very good i did the pc version just for your fyi so anyway um for velocity 2x we have used the vita as our lead platform which means that porting the game to the ps4 is a trivial task in terms of the performance but they have increased the visual fidelity they've pointed out you know they've improved the textures lighting and post-processing because well let's face it the ps4 is considerably more powerful but they didn't have to do anything special to, utify, to utilize them, sorry, or take advantage of the unified memory architecture of the PlayStation 4. Now, here's what I think is the interesting part, and this goes into more what Microsoft are trying to do right now in regards to the SDKs, and we've heard a lot of murmurings of this, but in general terms, memory is the slowest component for modern hardware most people talk about the cpu and the gpu speeds but they forget the transfer rate of data is the generally the biggest culprit in causing frame drops if computational units are starved of data or have to wait for output to be written back to memory that causes a bottleneck and having a high speed memory architecture alleviates the bottleneck when data doesn't need to be transferred between the cpu and gpu which can be accessed for both it also means developers no longer have to worry about running out of memory pool between the cpu and GPU efforts to balance uh, memory load it just makes things simpler so this actually touches a little bit on several different points and this is one of the reasons I wanted to bring this to your attention because it's an indication I'm sure most of you are probably aware now of how the PS4's memory architecture works I'm going to give a very brief overview um, I've done super in depth before, so you can just Google if you want to. Uh, you can just search Huma on the channel, that's H U M A, or Unified Memory Architecture. I've done articles and videos on it. But this is a kind of working example of this. It's basically saying that CPU and GPU are addressing not just the same physical memory, but they're actually addressing the same pieces of memory now that might sound a bit strange but how you can picture this in your head and i have done uh, diagrams on this before and what i'm going to do because i'm a very nice chap i'm going to link an article in this very video which is going to our website and that will teach oh sorry that will take you to uh, some diagrams that i've created myself with my awesome skills of photoshop yeah. Anyway, uh, with my awesome skills, and you can see exactly what I mean in terms of how that's laid out. But basically speaking, what it does is create a large container space where the GPU and CPU could both access exactly the same piece of data. Because traditionally, let's say you've got 8 gigabytes of RAM on a non-unified system well what might happen is that ram might be split arbitrarily at any different point so for example you can have two gigabytes for graphics and six gigabytes for the rest of the system or it could be four gigabytes and four gigabytes which is basically how the xbox 360 worked but this is very different so in other words the gpu and the cpu can both access exactly that piece of data so rather than it needing to be copied to do two different things this doesn't have to do that at all. This, even according to AMD themselves, and I've got all these points listed in this article um, that I'll link to on my website, but there are, uh, it, this means that you don't need to worry about special APIs. It's easier to program for. Um, operating systems prefer the hardware coherency. They don't need to um, bug reports on the platforms. It just makes bug finding and testing a lot easier. Now, Microsoft are trying to struggle a little bit here because the Xbox One, you know, it does have a form of unified memory architecture. It's not a uh, humor. It's like the one down from that, as far as I'm aware. And, you know, the big problem is ESRAM. 
uh, with the Xbox One, as we've discussed previously, because you've got kind of like a, a high gear, which is the ES RAM, but it's just not really got much in the tank in terms of the amount. So I think this is just one example of how developers are starting to push towards this. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been fairly short. As I said, I'm going to link to the original source of the interview, and I'm also linking to the um, humor article that I wrote way back when. When was it? It was in the mists, in the early dawn of man, also known apparently as the 23rd of August. Anyway, I'll let you go. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Take care, my friend. Bye for now.